There's one last closure topic I want to look at, which is how to write functions that accept functions as parameters. This is particularly important with closures, thanks to trailing closure syntax, but it's a useful skill in other places too. Now, previously, we looked at code like this. Funk greet user, print hi there. We call greet user, take a copy of greet user, and then call the copy. Now, I've specifically added the type annotation in there, open and close parens, returns void, because that's exactly what we use when specifying the uh, parameter that is a function to another function. We tell Swift what parameters the inner function accepts, what it returns, and move on. Once again, <laughs> brace yourself. This is hard stuff. The syntax is definitely hard on the eyes at first. We're gonna write a function that generates an array of integers by calling another function repeatedly. And that other function can be passed in. Tell me how to make an integer, please. And it looks like this. That first line particularly can just blow your brain. So let's just break it down nice and small. We'll go over this more than once. This function's called makeArray. It takes two parameters, size integer, and a generator function. This second parameter is the function it accepts. So we pass a function to this function. This function says, I will accept no parameters, but I'll return integer every time you call me. Inside make array, we go ahead and make a new empty integer array. We then call the generator function. Give me a number, please. And we then put that into the array. Eventually we return numbers and the whole thing goes back. Here is your finished integer array. Now the body of the function I think is mostly straightforward. Repeatedly call a generator function again and again and again, adding each value to an array, then send it all back. The complex part is the very first line. It's quite long. Uh, and here we have two sets of parentheses, two lots of return values. It can be a bit of a jumble at first. So let's break it down to small parts so you can see exactly what it's doing. First bit, easy. We use the funk keyword. It's gonna be a function. We call it make array. Our first parameter is size, how many items to make in our array. The second one is a function called generator. Open and close parens, this thing takes no parameters. Arrow int, it'll return integer every time it's called. It must return integer every time it's called. And the whole thing, all of make array, returns an integer array. And the result is now we can make arbitrary sized arrays of integers, passing in a function that should be used to generate each value. Like this. We could say, let roles equals make array size 50, start our closure expression, start our closure here, and then do int.random in 1 through 20, and then print the roles. So we're making an array of 50 items, and each one is being made by calling int.random in 1 through 20, again, again, again. So it's like rolling 20-sided dice 50 times and just return the results to what we're doing here. And remember, this same functionality also exists with dedicated functions too. So you could have said something like func generate number returns int and then int random in 1 through 20. And then we call make array, we make array size 50 using generate number. And so it'll call that same function 50 times to fill the array. Now, while you're learning Swift and SwiftUI, there'll only be a handful of times where you have to know how to accept functions as parameters. But at least now, you have an inkling of how it works and why it matters. There is one last thing I want to look at before we move on, which is that you can make your function accept multiple function parameters if you want to, in which case you can specify multiple trailing closures if they are the last parameters. The syntax here is very common in Swift UI. Even making buttons uses this syntax. So it's important to at least show you a taste of it here before you get further and further into Swift UI. To demonstrate this, we're going to write a function that accepts three function parameters, each of which accept no parameters and returns nothing. So over in Xcode, I'll say we have func do important work using 
First is a function that accepts nothing, returns void. Second is a function accepts nothing, returns void. And third is a function accepts nothing, returns void. And we're going to print out various messages here so you can see exactly what's going on. I'll print about to start first work, then call first. Now print about, oops, about to start second work, then call second. Then print about to start third work, third. And then print done, like that. So there's a whole bunch of print calls inside here to simulate some other work being done, whatever you want to do. In between, we'll call first, second, and third, in between the print calls. Now, when it comes to calling that, the first trailing closure is identical to what we've used already. But the second, third, fourth, fifth, if you need it down the line, they're formatted differently. You end the brace in the previous closure, you write the external parameter name and a colon, then start a new opening brace. So to call this thing, we might say, do important work, open brace. This will be the first training closure. So first, we'll do print. This is the first work. The second training closure is specified after the opening brace. We write second colon open brace, print. This is the second work. And the third, third colon, print. This is the third, third even, work, like that. And let's go ahead and run it back now. Boom. So you can see it's mixing in our code with the other ones. So about to start first work, it calls first, it prints, this is the first work. About to start second work, it calls second, yeah, yeah, yeah. As you can see, it's literally print that same data down here in that order. Now you might think, good grief, why would you ever want to have three trailing closures? It's not uncommon like you might expect. For example, uh, if you want to have a, a list of stuff in your Swift UI layout, and you want to say, here's a section inside the list of items, this thing is done with three trailing closures, one for the content itself, the main one, the first one here, but then also one for a header and one for a footer to put below. So you can add some text, whatever you want to above and below as needed. So there's three trailing closures. It's actually, actually not as uncommon as you might expect. Just in time, dogs. It's about to finish recording there and you get a treat. Come on, quick shot. Come on. Yes, I know you want a treat. Come on. Come on, get it. Work for it. Luna. You're getting two. Sorry. I'm not just coming now. Come on, quick shot. Say hello to your adoring fans, apparently. You have one already. Come on. Good dog, good dog. All right, anyway, multiple trailing closures. I know it's complex at first, but it is used surprisingly often in SwiftUI.